Hi everybody, I am that nursing prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Cushing syndrome. So let's get into it. So before we can understand Cushing syndrome, we have to understand the role of cortisol and ACTH. So cortisol, what does it do? It does several things in the body, right? It's what our body uses in response to stress. So it helps to regulate our blood pressure, decrease inflammation, it also regulates proteins, carbs, and fats in turning them into energy. And then ACTH regulates cortisol. So it decides if we're going to release a lot or a little or a normal amount. Okay. So if there's a problem with these things, now we have Cushing's. So what Cushing's is, is the body is either making way too much cortisol or way too much ACTH. So this can happen naturally as a result of things like a tumor. So a tumor on the pituitary gland causes an increase in the production of ACTH, which causes an increase in the production of cortisol. Or if you have an adrenal gland disease, this will also cause an increase in cortisol. So these are naturally occurring causes. Or the other potential cause is taking corticosteroids, especially taking them at very high doses over a long period of time. That can also lead to Cushing syndrome. A helpful tool for you to remember the signs and symptoms is stressed. Because remember, cortisol is released in response to stress. So S, skin heals very slowly. So they are at higher risk for infection. Their skin is thinner, they bruise easily. T, they have what's called truncal obesity with thin arms. So their midsection is heavy, they're bigger in the middle, but they have very skinny, skinny arms. R is for round face. Sometimes they refer to that as a moon face appearance. Also, reproductive issues. In women who have this, they may experience amenorrhea, so lack of menstruation. For men, um, when it comes to reproductive issues, erectile dysfunction, edema, and electrolyte imbalances, specifically low potassium levels, so hypokalemia. Their sugars are elevated, so hyperglycemia. They have striae, which are stretch marks, and they appear purplish in color. E is for extra hair on the body, especially in women. A woman who has Cushing's will start to develop some more like traditional male physical characteristics like excessive body hair. And then D is for dorsocervical fat. Sometimes they refer to that as a buffalo hump on their back. So it's an area of fat that gets collected. And then the final D is depression. So we have a lot of physical signs and symptoms, but we also want to address their mental state and depression is a potential thing that could happen to a patient who has Cushing's. How is Cushing's diagnosed? Well, a couple of things they might want to do. They first will ask you to do maybe a 24-hour urine or take some blood to check the levels of cortisol in your body to see if they're excessive. They might ask you to do a saliva test. So your cortisol levels in a person who does not have Cushing's syndrome they kind of vary throughout the day, right? They fluctuate, but usually by nighttime, they drop. But with somebody who has excessive cortisol production, they're not gonna drop at night. So cortisol levels will still be elevated even at nighttime. They might wanna do a CT or an MRI, especially if they think this might be caused by a tumor. If they wanna rule out this being a pituitary problem, they're going to do petrosal sinus sampling. These are the veins that drain the pituitary gland. So they're gonna take blood from that area to see like, okay, where is this issue originating? They need to find out the cause to help determine treatment. So diagnosis can help us figure out where this is starting, what's the cause of this. When it comes to treatment and nursing interventions, it's really gonna depend on the cause. So if the cause is something like a tumor, they're gonna to wanna to do surgery to remove the tumor. So you as the nurse are gonna to have to do the pre, intra, and post-op care for this patient. 
They might also choose to do an adrenalectomy, which is another surgery that you might need to assist with and have to do uh, pre, post, and intra-op care for. If it's caused by excessive corticosteroid use, we're going to want them to decrease the use of those medications as safely as possible. A lot of times, especially if it is a tumor, they might want to do radiation first or radiation and surgery together. We might be giving medications to help control cortisol production in the body. We need to monitor their fluid and electrolyte levels and monitor their mental health because remember one of the symptoms is depression. So we want to assess like how are you doing? Like how are we doing mentally? Right? That's important too. Make sure we encourage them to have calcium and vitamin D. A complication of Cushing syndrome is osteoporosis. So bone loss which can lead to fractures. And of course we don't want that to happen. So encouraging them to take calcium and vitamin D supplements and getting enough in their diet. And then if they do have surgery, they might now be on cortisol replacement to make sure that they have an adequate amount of cortisol in their body. Because we do need to have some, right? We need a normal healthy amount. We just don't want too much, which is what's occurring when you have Cushing syndrome. So that was my video. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. If not, I'll see you on the next one.